Do you sometimes drag a formula lower than you need just in case new data gets added later? That leaves a ton of zeros on the bottom which looks confusing and ugly. Luckily, there's a new Excel feature called the dot operator that solves this problem just by adding one extra dot. Let's see how it works. Suppose we have this basic table over here that has the products, the revenue and the cost and we want to calculate the profit on the side. So for this, if you want to do it for all of these cells, you might think of just pressing the equal sign and selecting all of the revenues minus all of the costs or expenses. When you hit enter there, you'll notice that it spills down all the way to the bottom. That said, if I were to add some more numbers in here, you'll notice that the formula doesn't automatically come lower down. Instead of having to drag it down manually every time, you might think of just getting a bigger range. So I can just double click in this area and simply take it all the way down to a lower number like this so we have quite a bit of a buffer. Now if we hit enter though you'll notice that all of these do get calculated but the problem is that we have all of these zeros on the bottom which looks quite confusing and frankly a bit ugly too. To fix this you might be like why not just use an if statement to get rid of that zero. So up top over here we could delete this formula and simply say if hit the tab key if the revenue minus the costs is equals to a zero. Then if that's the case, I just wanted to leave it empty. So I'll put two quotations there, which means empty in Excel, press the comma key and the value if false, meaning that if it's not zero, then I do wanna do the revenue minus the costs. We'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. It looks good till there and we can just drag this all the way down to the bottom area. That's looking quite promising, but you'll notice when the actual value equals to zero, so maybe sometimes revenue minus cost could be exactly zero, then we have nothing in here, which is even more confusing. Also, this is quite time consuming to set up, especially for something as simple as revenue minus costs. For all these reasons, Microsoft came up with the dot operator. All we need to do is select the relevant ranges. So let's say all of this revenue range minus all of this cost range on the side with a good bit of buffer there. And if we just hit enter there, you'll notice we get the zeros. But now all we need to do is add an extra dot. You can see here in the colon, just after that, I need to put a dot, quite literally just a dot there and another one on this side. When I hit enter now, you'll notice that it's actually showing us the zero here because 100 minus 100 is zero. But for anything below that, it's not showing any zeros. This is fully dynamic, so I can delete certain values and you'll see it gets rid of everything. Or I can simply add more rows. I'm just going to copy these and paste them down below and you can see this gets filled in lower too. That's not all though, it doesn't just work for data below a certain range, it also works for data above it. Let me show you an example. Suppose that we've got this whole profit area that we want to basically copy into a separate sheet. So I can go on another sheet right here and maybe it's better to select the whole column. This way we don't have to worry about how long our range is. So I can just select the whole column E like that and hit enter. You'll notice when I do, I have a zero up top and I have a lot of zeros down below, which looks very ugly. That said, as you might recall earlier, we added a dot and that removed all of the zeros we had below. Now for the top part, as you might be able to guess, we just need to add a dot up front. Hit enter there and now it's moved it all the way up. So the profit is our first row. And of course, this is fully dynamic too. So for instance, if I added some more data on the top right here, and some extra data over here on the bottom and we went back to the worksheet without needing to press refresh or anything like that. It's all been updated here too. You might be surprised to hear that the dot operator is actually a bit of a shortcut. In fact, it's part of a bigger function called the trim range function. So let me show you how that works. Over here, we've got the same column as before where we have some zeros in front and some zeros in the end. So to trim this, we said that before we use the dot right here and the second dot on this side. That said, if you wanted to use a formula instead, it's the trim range function. Hit the tab key there and all we need to do is close the parenthesis and hit enter. You'll notice it's removed the zero from the front and from the end as well. If we go back inside of the function and put a comma there, you'll notice that we have this trim mode. So we can get rid of the one on the top, so that's the leading one, get rid of the ones on the bottom only, or both. 
hit the comma key again here and this is if you had the data in a column instead of in a row format. Let's just put the trailing in here and hit enter. You'll notice that it shows back the top zero as that's a leading one instead. Based on that example, you might think the trim range function is a good alternative to the dot, but when it comes to more complex formulas, that's not really the case. Let's suppose here we just have the subtraction like before and we want to get rid of the zeros. To do that, we don't just have to do one trim range at the start, like this. If we only did this and hit enter, you'll notice we actually get errors on the bottom. Instead, we need to add the trim range function here in the end as well. And that does the job for us. But if we look back at the formula bar, this looks very difficult for something as simple as revenue minus costs. That's why I'd recommend just using the dot operator instead. And next up, we're gonna look at some more realistic and complex scenarios where you might want to use it. But first, if you're liking this content and you want to learn more, I'd recommend you check out our range of courses, which include Excel, Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and more, as well as a range of bundle packages. And what makes our courses different is that they're all applied to the real world. So aside from teaching the theory, our lessons also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from creating a financial model from scratch on Excel, to creating a PNL dashboard on Power BI, all the way to making a professional pitch deck presentation on PowerPoint. So if you're interested in checking them out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. A great real-world use case of the dot operator is with a drop-down list. For example, let's suppose that we want all of the lists of products. For that, we would go over to data here and click on this drop-down part, data validation. Now, within this area, we would want a list and that list should be, as the source, all of our products. That said, we want to make sure we get some all the way to the bottom, just in case we get new entries in the future. So I'm going to press on OK here. And when I go to this drop down, all of these look good, except that very last one where we have an empty row. That's because we've selected all of these that are empty at the moment. If you want to get rid of that, we can also use the trim range function or the dot operator. So all we would need to do is click on this area again and just add after the colon another dot. Hit OK there, it's really that simple and now we no longer have that empty space. Even better if I were to add more data in here, that still gets shown in this drop down, so it is fully automatic. One key feature that I still haven't shown you is that the dot operator also works with other functions. Let me show you an example here where we've got the revenue for the quarter one and for the quarter two. We want to combine these into one big table like this for the quarter and the total revenue. In this case, it's all in the same worksheet, but it could well be that this isn't a separate worksheet. It would work exactly the same. For something like this, I think a good formula to use is the vstack function. Hit the tab key there and the first array is all of this area right here, but there might be new entries in Q1. So let's add a few more on the bottom there, comma, and we'll do the exact same thing with the Q2 part. Hit enter there and you'll notice that we get all of these zeros in the middle and towards the end which really look quite bad. So now all we need to do is double click in here and just add the dot at the very end on both sides. Once we do that you'll notice that all the dots disappear and we have no gaps between our data. If more data gets added in here then that's going to update dynamically as you can see. Throughout this video, you might have been thinking, Kenji, why not just use a table? After all, if we were to do this same scenario with a table, we would simply take the revenue minus the costs, and we would just need to drag this down once. And once it's ready, all I need to do is press Ctrl T to convert that into a table. Obviously, the formatting changes here, but as soon as I add some new data in this part, you'll notice that the formula already gets dragged down automatically. So whatever data I put in here, you'll notice that it automatically gets filled in. That said, not all scenarios are good for tables. For example, depending on the person, you might not like that it changes the formatting quite a lot and it makes it quite rigid. So for instance, I can't just add a space in between these two. It's always going to show this column one in between. So I would need to create new tables, for instance. Also, it changes the way I name things. So I can't just select cell D2. 
Instead, it's called this different name now. So depending on your scenario, this might not be ideal. So the dot operator can be a great alternative. Overall, if you're not very familiar with Excel tables, they're super underrated and I strongly recommend you learn them by watching this video over here on Excel tables. And if you want to be up to date on the latest Excel knowledge, then you should watch this video right here for the latest Excel features. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.